Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Be Is For Build. In today's episode, I got a bunch of Mishimoto goodies behind me that we're gonna be installing on the burnt -Con. Nope, this is called the jump -Con. I was close. Well, the last time we built a Lamborghini, we used Mishimoto cooling and it worked great. So we're doing it again in today's episode. Rear mounted, up high radiator, something we've never done before. We're gonna figure out how to do it, mount it securely so this thing will work in off-road conditions. That's the game plan, stay tuned. Before we get down to work, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Omaze. They're giving you guys the opportunity to win a very cool 2021 Corvette Stingray. Very, very rare car, very hard to get a hold of. And on top of that, the ultimate VIP experience at the Indy 500. So let's talk about the C8 Corvette Stingray that you can win. It is an amazing car. They are super, super hard to find. It's so rare that all the 2020 and 2021 models are all sold out. It's got just shy of 500 horsepower, which is pretty amazing and as a lot of you guys know it's the first generation after 60 years of making the Corvette it's the first generation to be mid-engine which is very unique it's got the arctic white exterior jet black interior top speed of 194 miles per hour and a zero to 60 in just shy of three seconds and you get a chance to win that and on top of that you get the ultimate vip experience to the indy 500 for you and a friend you can ride in the indy 500 festival parade and attend the vip race party tour the pits in the garages you take a pre-race lap and then watch the 500 from the vip suite i've been lucky enough to be to an indy race before in the vip section and it is a truly amazing really really cool experience and this campaign also supports a charity the charity is the 500 festival the 500 festival foundation generates funds in support of the 500 Festival's mission to produce life-enriching events and programs, fostering a positive impact on the city of Indianapolis and the state of Indiana. And your generosity can help the foundation in the advancement of the 500 Festival's youth programs and initiatives to provide access to underserved communities. So it's a win-win. And I hope one of you guys wins as well. So guys, to potentially win this awesome 2021 C8 Corvette Stingray, along with the ultimate VIP experience to the Indy 500 and to support a great charity like the 500 Festival, make sure you go to the link at the top of the description or what's on the screen right here. It's omaze.com slash B is for build. Go check it out. Huge thanks to Omaze for sponsoring this episode. Now let's get down to work. All right, so we got a bunch of cooling products from Mishimoto here. I honestly ordered these quite a while ago, so I'm quite excited to unbox these and see what we got. I know we have a dual core radiator. You know, let's unbox it. I'll show you through it all as soon as I get it all out. Well, I'll be honest, that's uh, not exactly what I expected to unbox. We're supposed to have our radiator right here that we got, that's awesome, and then our radiator fan shroud kit with fans and a shroud, and we accidentally got two radiators. So there was a mistake in shipping. Um, I called Mishimoto, they are taking care of it, they are going to expedite and ship out the uh, fan shroud kit. So that goes right, right here from like, basically right there on that line over to here. It's a fan shroud with two fans, it just clips onto this thing. So uh, unfortunately we won't be able to install that today but we're going to move forward because that's very quick and easy to install afterwards and we got a lot of good stuff so let me show you through this this is a, a dual core radiator so the water actually flows through this kind of like one radiator would traditionally have another like outlet here and then it comes down and it's forced to flow through this as well um, i have seen online okay i'm not exactly a scientist when it comes to this stuff but i've had good luck with the dual cores cooling a lot more just cooling a lot more than single core radiators. Whether or not that's true, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it forces all the water through more surface area. I couldn't tell you. But if you guys remember back on the 2JZ swap BRZ, uh, the dual core really was the end all answer. And so on this build, we have a limited amount of airflow. It's not like a front mounted radiator uh, being in the back. Uh, we have a lot of airflow, but we have somewhat limited airflow. So I wanted to go with a dual core. So we got one, it's awesome. So we got that right there. Also with the radiator cooling system, we have a overflow tank. So this is just a really nice black crinkle coat painted uh, overflow tank from Mishimoto. Comes with a bunch of brackets too for mounting. This needs to be mounted up a little bit high. We'll show you that. So that's our overflow. It's gonna go along with our radiator. 
Um, unrelated to the cooling system, we also got their um, compact baffled uh, oil catch can. So this is a three port oil catch can. Um, and this is going to be uh, used on our race engine when that comes in. So you'll see that installed in another uh, episode. And then we also got a trans cooler. So we got a trans cooler right here that will uh, cool our manual Graziano transmission. And all this is gonna get installed today. So uh, first we should get the engine ready for coolant stuff. So we've been calling this our like mock-up engine. This is a low miles uh, LS1 out of a Chevy Corvette that we had, the off-road Corvette. Um, turns out since our race engine's taken a while to be built, we're gonna go ahead and run this for the first few startups and stuff like that. So we're, we're moving forward basically with this engine until the race engine comes in. Fingers crossed the race engine will be here soon enough and then it'll be a quick swap over, but for now we're gonna get this thing running. Um, so that means getting our accessories dialed in. We got things like the water pump. Not a lot of point in installing radiator without a water pump. Uh, alternator, uh, power steering, stuff like that. Let's go ahead and get started with a water pump. So this is just a slim profile water pump. It's the slimmest one you can get. I think, I wanna say it's off of a GTO, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and we're gonna need the thermostat and the thermostat thing. So you got one radiator hose goes right here. The other one right here, heater hose just connect to each other. So we're eliminating that. So that guy is gonna come off of here. It's got some old crusties on it and whatnot. So we'll go ahead and hit this with a wire brush on a drill, clean this piece up, take our thermostat off, uh, use a new gasket, get our thermostat installed on our water pump, and then new gaskets right here. We'll clean the surface up as well with a wire brush and get our water pump bolted onto our engine. All right, guys, well, the theme of things not exactly going perfectly, um, it, it's continuing. Behind the scenes before like, we even got started on this episode, we tried to source a bunch of parts, and uh, man, nothing was fitting with anything. Uh, but we, you know, it's a beautiful build. We just keep moving forward, and we keep, wait, that's somebody else's tagline. Oscar said it. We just keep building stuff, and around three in the morning-ish, we, we finish eventually. So uh, here's what happened. This water pump is off of like a 2000 to 2001 Corvette and the thermostat is not the same thermostat as this one that this one needs and this is off of a 2006 Corvette. So this applies to some Cadillacs and some Corvettes and some other cars like that. So Kyle's running down to the automotive parts store to buy a thermostat that will bolt onto here. That's not a really hard to find part so I'm really hoping it'll be on the shelf somewhere. Uh, but we can keep uh, we can keep moving on. It's installed the right way um, everything else is, uh, we have in the mail coming is a heater hose, heater core delete hose. And it's a really simple, it's just a U and it just wraps around here. We put two hose clamps on that and that is done. Um, so we'll get this done afterwards. Let's move on to the alternator. We used a, uh, we ordered a ITC billet alternator uh, relocation bracket. This is the same stuff that we used a bunch of these on the boat and they worked really good. And this is gonna mount our alternator down here nice and low. I think I got a better alternator laying around. I might not, but we'll take a look on what we got um, laying around the shop and then uh, bolt it up. The alternator is on. We were able to find a nice Holly uh, high amperage alternator that I originally bought for the Burnticon, but we didn't use it because we had a kind of custom setup there. Similar to the custom setup here. So that's cool. Um, the ICT billet uh, block. Now these guys, I'm just gonna give them a free shout out. I've never got anything free from them, but they make really, really great products and they do a lot of LS swap stuff. So, hey, if I know anybody over there, you know, hit me up, slide into those DMs. But uh, no, we're really happy with uh, this stuff. It's, it's real slick and we're real happy about that. So now we gotta do something a little bit custom. Next we need our power steering pump. Power steering pump goes in right about here. This is the OEM power steering pump. Um, I would call it a bracket usually, but it's just so much more. And it goes like right about here. So you can see that's hitting our pulley spot right there that we like. And then it's got this big chunk up here that's meant to hold the alternator up high where we can't do it because we don't have space. So we're gonna go ahead and make a cut right through here like that, cut off this chunk. And then down here, we're gonna cut this guy off and that should give us four nice 
bolt uh, spots and to bolt in our power steering pump. Oscar's gonna work on cutting this up. I'm gonna dig out our power steering pump. Oscar trimmed up our power steering bracket. It looks really good. Um, and then our power steering pump kind of flops in here like so. Is it gonna go like, I think it's gonna go like this. Um, the better bolt into this. Oh man, that's uh, extremely tight against a... We might have to trim out this wall. Oh gosh. All right, hang on one second. We gotta figure this out. All right, well that's not exactly cool. This is an aftermarket uh, power steering pump. Uh, you know, luckily I forgot the brand name, but this is for off-road racing. It's a 1500 PSI power steering pump with hard, hard uh, AN line fittings on it. We have to go get like hydraulic hoses made for this. And I was kind of bummed to see that it just literally just jams its its outlet straight into the into the bracket. Uh, but so we're gonna go ahead and trim where you can see this line to make room, and we'll have to get a uh, a 90, like a hard 90, to bend off of that really fast and then come out. And while it's coming out, we're gonna have to dodge a lot of belts and stuff. But that's a problem for another day when we're getting the hydraulic lines made for the power steering. So for now, we'll just go ahead and trim that out, and we bolt the pump into here and bolt the pump to the head. We got that power steering pump bracket in and then the power steering pump inside it. It was a little, it was a little tricky, but we got it. And then we did a temporary routing of the belt. So um, we managed to get a pulley onto here, which I don't think it's supposed to go there, but it's working. And I think it's gonna work for what we need to do. And uh, so anyways, you can see it goes around the water pump, like through that, through here, up around the alternator and then the power steering and back down. So don't mind the slack, we'll measure it out and, uh, and get it. This is our auto tensioning pulley right here. And it's looking good. It looks like a solid routing and it gives us lots of room to get that that, um, fitting out of there to run the um, hydraulic power steering line. So that's cool. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull this belt off here. That was just to figure out our routing. And now we are gonna go ahead and lift up the engine and trans and place it back in the car. Oh wait, I forgot to do the thermostat. Kyle came back with the thermostat. I'll go ahead and get this bolted on with the gasket and then we'll be ready. All right, we're ready. Time for the engine to go in. Guys, remember how we started this uh, day talking about how nothing is, nothing's working. We got a problem. We got another problem. So it may look like we just do everything willy nilly, but we we design a lot of this stuff and we we kind of create game plans and and uh, measure things. We do a lot of measuring. Gosh, I can't get a view of this at all. I think you're starting to see the problem here. The lower thermostat housing dong fitting is just straight into the fuel cell. The other one actually like runs into a pretty good spot and we're happy with that but this guy this guy's a problem so we got to pull the engine out of the car again we'll pull the engine out we're gonna have to take that piece off cut it re-weld it at more of a 90 degree angle um, that way it will miss the fuel cell and we can get a hose on the end of it and uh and then i i hope that'll work i hope that'll work so yeah we're gonna go ahead and pull the engine take it off cut it Reweld it, reinstall it, put the engine back in. We managed to get over one more hurdle with a little bit of do it yourself in. I don't know how many more hurdles we're going to be able to get over because stores are all closed now. So that was, anyways, hopefully it'll be smooth sailing from now. We got that uh, 90 degree all welded up. Oscar welded it up. We uh, water tested it, make sure it's not leaking at all. It's all good. Threw the thermostat back in there and bolted it on. Uh, I, in the meantime, threw the, uh, this is going to be our demo um, intake manifold. So we're going to be running this intake manifold on this engine. Uh, as we work with this engine when we switch over to our other engine, it's gonna have different heads and we will run a different intake manifold But for now, 
this is the one. So next up, we're ready to do the bottom mounting of the radiator. The bottom mount of the radiator goes into the firewall. It bolts into the firewall down here. So Oscar and I will do a bunch of measuring and uh, uh, making sure we like find center of the car so it doesn't look silly. And so the, the radiator gets mounted in like, like that and coming out like that. Uh, and in the end, there's going to be a roof scoop that scoops the air straight into the radiator, forces all the air that comes over the top of the car into the radiator and uh, will create a lot, a lot of flow. So we gotta get the bottom down there and have it come up like that. All right guys, poked a couple holes through the firewall, little duct tape on the roof, we're good to ride. Now, uh, this is how we're mocking it up. We got our angle the way we like it. We had to do a lot of measurements off of the rear of the intake manifold, the backside of the intake manifold, because we've got those uh, that, that fan shroud and the fans coming onto there, and it's getting to be a, a pretty tight scenario, but we've, we believe we've got the room. So now we're gonna do the more permanent part of the mounting. So on the bottom, by the way, right now we just have bolts. What I'm gonna be doing is 3D printing rubber isolators and some rubber kind of, uh, cushions and stuff for this thing. So it's all sitting on rubber. Nothing's gonna be hard mounted because with an off-road build like this, lots of vibrations. You gotta be really careful about eating through the aluminum and stuff like that. So uh, just trust that that stuff will come. Anyways, this is the angle that we like it at. Uh, the way I've designed this is that we have a bar coming off of here, goes up like this and then straight across. And it's kind of gonna just go right over the back side of this. And then we'll have a safety light that mounts right over here on the bar. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab some metal stock and hit the tubing bender and bend that thing up and cope it to match right here. part is done. Getting this thing bent exactly right and coped and everything was quite the challenge, but Oscar did a great job. Did everybody get their t-shirt? Um, so you can see it's, uh, we leveled it with the car. We leveled it with everything. It's looking great. It, the bends stop exactly at the end of the radiator like we wanted it to. Very, very happy with how this turned out. So, um, for right now, this is being used to hold the top of the radiator and um, there's a light that you might've seen us mocking up. The light goes right there, but then also the roof scoop goes into this in the long run. So the roof scoops up here, we funnel all the air into there. Uh, we get lots of cooling goodness. So we're there. Next thing I gotta do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut out some tabs that we can weld on right here and put a bolt through. Two tabs made, I just made them extra long, so we just gotta do one final little trim up. Measure up, trim up, Chelsea's here. Hi, Chelsea. Uh, we're gonna do one trim up and uh, and then tack weld these in on the back side of our tube, right where the hole needs to go, and then we can send some bolts through and just bolt this thing on. She's in, the radiator is fully mounted now. Now, like I said, I gotta build some rubber isolator pieces, but um, other than that, we are actually hard mounted into the car now. This is really cool. So we just welded those tabs on and that is good to go. So we gotta run some hoses. We got some really custom hoses. This one up here has to go to that guy down there. Where is it? Right there. And then the bottom one goes to the one that we modified. Uh, should be pretty quick. We'll run those hoses and then run the hoses. We got the hoses on. Uh, there's a few small tweaks that we're gonna make. I wanna bring this one in a little bit, so I'm gonna shorten this up. And I don't like the mismatched look with the smooth hose and then the 
crinkle bendy one so when we have some more time to do a little bit of hose shopping we'll get a uh the right size hose for this if anybody's wondering how we um when we're doing like custom builds like this if if you know you need your own hose like that we really recommend just going with these ones um because they can bend faster and do tighter bends and stuff and get around or you just have to run to the back of whatever auto parts store and ask them to look at the whole like rundown and then just get lucky that's how that one worked out. So that's uh, the game plan we're gonna go for replacing that one too. If you guys remember at the top of this episode, I did say that we were gonna install the trans cooler. Um, it is 2.30 in the morning and Chelsea's been waiting very patiently to drive me home. She has to drive me home because Kyle's borrowing the truck to go tow another car that I just bought. And I know you guys are just so happy about me buying all these new builds. So I'm just not even gonna mention that one. We're just gonna, I'm just gonna start using it, not tell anybody what it is. Maybe you'll see it on Instagram, who knows? Anyways, the trans cooler. Since we don't have the time right now to build the uh, mounting brackets, I just wanna show you guys where it's gonna go. We're gonna mount off of the heads here. It'll go onto there and there, and we can build like a, a four-way bracket or a three-way bracket there. Hoses run down, and then they go into the trans here and here. We bought all the fittings today, we got all the stuff, but we just ran out of time to do the brackets, but that's where our trans cooler is gonna go. These transmissions run pretty cool as, the, uh, uh, like from stock um, the burnt con doesn't even have a cooler we just have like a looped hose and we haven't had any problems so um, we're gonna we want to run a cooler because of the elements this, this thing's gonna be in but it's from what I've been told uh, by people that really know these transaxles that something like that will will totally suffice uh, we would put it further back here but we got we have to put a muffler on this car because uh, yeah you just gotta and a, tire. and a tire spare tire goes back here as well so lots of stuff going back there all right guys that's a wrap on this episode thank you so much for joining in the next episode we're gonna fire up one of them brand new boat engines we'll see you then peace <laughs>